Today we are going to the book of Genesis chapter 37 from verse 2 to verse 11. The book of Genesis chapter 37 from verse 2 to verse 11. And the topic today is rip what you sow. So beginning in the book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 2. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhar and the sons of Sipah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that, their father loved him more than any of them. They hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time this the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. So we come to this chapter and we see that the main character shifts from Jacob and now to Joseph. And Joseph's story is always attractive to many generations because, well, he was hated by his brother and then eventually was being sold and become a slave and go all the way to the bottom of the entire society because he was later on framed uh, to, to be in prison. But then after he was in prison, he was raised up all the way to be in power and let's face it he was the second man of Egypt and so this type of life story including all the betrayal all the up and downs in lives you know all the excitement to see how the main character turns out to be and how he end up forgiving all his family and save all his family all these details attract people to look at and so most of the time we study Joseph's life and, um, and we only look at his life individually as if, you know, it is not part of the book of Genesis or as if his life is not part of the entire Bible. So sometimes we missed what happened before Joseph's stories and what happened after that. And we are going to fill that gap right now and then look at the scripture itself. Okay. So Joseph's story from chapter 37 all the way to the end of the book of Genesis in chapter 50 is a partial fulfillment of Abraham's, uh, prom uh, well, God's promise unto Abraham, not Abraham's promise to God. I got that flip. So Joseph's life reveal how God pr uh, fulfilled his promise unto Abraham and right now in Joseph, especially in the part where I'll bless you uh, I'll bless those who bless you, I'll curse those who curse you, and I'll make you into a great nation. Well, quite frankly, by the end of the, the, end of the book of Genesis, there were only 50 of them, uh, 70, sorry, 70 of them in Jacob's family. But then, through Joseph's life, especially when he raised up in power, all the other nations was blessed through Joseph. So that was partially fulfilled. But then the not fulfilled part is that you know, uh, Abraham's descendants through Isaac and through Jacob was not a nation yet. But then after the book of Genesis, in the book of Exodus, you will see that the Israel nation or, you know, uh, Jacob's descendants become so numerous to the point where Pharaoh in the book of Exodus had to oppress them because they are growing stronger and stronger 
and growing in numbers as well. So before Joseph's story and after Joseph's story, you would be able to see uh, uh, God's promise unto Abraham in Joseph's life. And I do not want us to miss that big picture. Okay. And then when the time it leads up to Joseph's story, uh, it was all around like Jacob's life. And a little bit reminder uh, in Jacob's life unto you know, uh, Joseph is that all the family dynamics in Jacob's family, you will have to uh, be pretty clear who doesn't like who and who loves who more than you know, all the other people. To have that dynamic in mind and you will understand this chapter a lot better than you know, just take Joseph's life out of the entire book of Genesis and study his life on his own. And so leading up to this point, just a couple of reminder, uh, especially what happened in chapter 34, where you know, uh, Jacob's daughter Dinah was uh, violated in the land of she Shechem and you know how Jacob were being silenced the entire chapter in chapter 34. Why that chapter was, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, why that chapter was like a background story unto what happened starting chapter 37 was because Jacob's attitude towards you know, uh, Dinah's incident and Joseph incidents was completely opposite, completely different. Okay. In Dinah's situation, Jacob did not say anything, but all that he was concerning was about himself, about his name, whether he will be saved in the land of Canaan or not. But later on when Joseph, you know, something happened to him and then Jacob would not receive any comfort within his own family. And so uh, also in this chapter 37, you would see that, you know, Jacob loved Joseph a lot more, well, or yeah, a lot more than the rest of the family. Well, because remember Jacob's wives, you know, uh, which was Rachel and Leah, J Jacob never loved Leah. And so all his sons, born by Leah, you know, Jacob did not pay much attention or did not have a great regard to them. And so uh, when Rachel was going to give birth to Benjamin, well, she passed away after that. So as you can see, uh, Jacob's love for Rachel shipped all the way to Joseph only. And so this is the background family dynamic within Jacob's family so that you would understand a lot more what's going to happen in chapter 37 all the way to chapter 50 in the book of Genesis. Okay, so with all this in mind, hopefully when we come now to a first by first um, uh, understanding of this chapter, you would be able to follow through all the way from the beginning of Abraham's life all the way to how Abraham's descendant through Isaac and then Jacob would become a nation and how all the other nation will be blessed but through Joseph. Okay, so starting first two, Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhar and the sons of Sipa, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. So what's funny in this verse is that with the background dynamic inside J Jacob's family, you would find it normal right now why Joseph would, you know, only tending flocks with his brothers who are the sons of Bilhar and the sons of Sipa only, but not the sons of Leah. Because back in chapter 34, you know, uh, Leah's sons were, you know, furious about Jacob being silenced regarding to their own sister born by Leah, you know, and all the incidents come up with it is that the dynamic between Leah's sons and Rachel's sons were very tense already, especially with Jacob playing favoritism, you know, towards Rachel, which is a really one side favoritism towards Rachel and right now to Joseph. And it is normal for you to see that, you know, Joseph only hang out or tending flocks with the sons of Bilhar and the sons of Sipa, but not the sons of Leah. 
And this already implied the tension between the you know, brothers and sisters inside Jacob's family. Okay, so it is not a good implication right here already. On top of it, Joseph being a 17 teenager, you know, the last sentence in verse 2 would have like a, a very bad thing on top of the, you know, difficult dynamics inside Jacob's family. Joseph would bring their father a bad report about them. Now, we do not know whether the bad report is just, you know, whether Joseph's brothers were really misbehaving or Joseph knowingly that my father lost me a lot more than all the other brothers and seeing that in his father's one-sided love towards him he made up report to his father about how their brothers are doing so that he gained a lot more attention from Jacob only we do not know about that and we're not entirely sure about that but then with the dynamic being tensed and difficult already what Joseph was doing here did not help but only putting fuel on top of the fire and then verse 3 <clears throat> now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made a richly ornamented robe for him so as if chapter 34 did not speak enough about how Jacob did not really pay much attention to Leah's sons and daughter right here this verse really signify how much Jacob has his one side love towards Joseph and almost as if all the other sons were not there okay as if all the other sons did not realize that my father did not love me on top of everything okay jo uh, Jacob did this make a richly ornamented robe or you know a tunic for Joseph to wear okay this really signify the love that Jacob had for Joseph and at the same time increase the tension between the dynamics of Leah's son and Rachel's sons and Bilhah's sons and Sipha's sons which is like almost 10 to 1 or 10 to 2 well if you include Benjamin in there and so this did not help on top of what Joseph did was were not helping at all so going on to verse 4 when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him so this is the consequences of what Jacob and Joseph were doing that is make all the other brothers hated you guys even more than they than they already were okay and to the point right here you have to pay attention to it they, it the scripture said they could not speak a kind word to him so all the all the conversation in the family between Leah's son and Joseph were pretty hostile at this moment and so let's stop here and reflect this one thing as the topic today is reap what you sow right Abraham had faith in God and follow God and inherit all the covenant you know all the blessings from God and that is what he ripped okay uh, what he sold and then what he ripped is in God's blessing okay and Jacob in his own life uh, well did some mistake of course but then this is also the consequences that he need to face that is his one-sided favoritism towards Joseph would eventually come back and haunt him and this is something uh, we need to reflect upon why because it's always easy it's always easy for us to observe other people's life what they are doing what they are sowing today and we kind of have an expectation that one day you will you guys will whip what is going to happen in your life if you continue your own path right now but it's always easy for us to see other people but then when the time we turn the table around and ask ourselves what are we doing today what are we sowing today in our own lives and what do we expect to rip in the future now if you 
ask yourself this question every single day regarding to your decision making, I am hoping that you would find a, a path in the scripture for you to base on to make your decisions. Why? Because right now you are having the expectation of what you want to rip one day. And so what should I do today? And what decisions should I make today so that I will, I will go ahead and have that uh, expectation in mind and in the near future, I will be able to have that result in my own life. Okay, and this is important, which is having the end in your mind, having a vision in your mind. What do you want to be in five years, in 10 years, you know, regarding to your work, regarding to your family, regarding to, you know, your career goal or, you know, whatnot. And above all, let me ask you this. What do you, what do you see in your relationship between God in five years? This is one question that I never heard anyone ask me or heard anyone asking anybody else. Because sometimes if we ask this question, you know, what do you see in your relationship with God in five years? Or let it, let it not be too abstract. Let me tweak that question a little bit. What do you see with your spouse or with your girlfriend, boyfriend in the near five years? What do you think? And you know, in a boyfriend, girlfriend situation, the next proper step would be getting married. Or if you're already married, the next proper step may be having children, or if not, then it will probably shift back to your career goal and your finances and everything. Okay. But then when the time we look at our own relationship with God, we usually don't have our so-called next step. But then it actually do. It actually does. So if you just, you know, uh, become a Christian, do you want to serve? Do you want to serve God? Are you willing to put some time every single day to ask God what he wants you to serve him with? Do you think that he will answer you that? And most time we do not ask that question. We do not think about like, how should I get closer to God, you know, to the point that in five years, I will be able to serve in church with the gifts that he give me to serve. Or will I be receiving any calling or will I, you know, go ahead and study and prepare myself theologically or biblically to inherit the calling of God in the near future. And of course, I know we cannot box God in in a time frame that, okay, God, you better give me the calling in five years. Otherwise, I do not know how to plan my life. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm suggesting is that do you have the relationship of God between God and yourself in your mind that what you are going to decide today will rip one day in God's blessing? Do you want to inherit more of the truth in your life? Do you want to understand the word of God a lot more than what you already know today in two years, three years, four years, five years, so that your life will be completely transformed by the word of God? I know it's very general, it's very broad, you know, for one thing, why I do not, you know, single down to all the details is because God is the living God and every one of us has a different goal, has a different purpose in life and has different spiritual gifts from God for us to serve him with. So I cannot, you know, tell right now what your gift is, what your purpose of God is in your life. But then the general direction is that if you do not get close to God today, if you do not plan to build your relationship with God today, how are you going to expect yourself to grow spiritually and have the word of God to manifest in your life to be the foundation of your life so that in the near future, you would be able to understand the will 
and the calling of God in your life today. And that is very, very important. And that's why right here, what Jacob did back like uh, several chapters, well, it already feel this tension in his family and one day or in the later part of this scripture Jacob would rip what he saw which is his one-sided favoritism towards Rachel and towards Joseph and you know completely ignore Leah and her sons and for Joseph well 17 a uh, 17 years old teenager boy right and a lot of people give that excuse that, you know, a teenager doesn't know what they're doing. Well, I do not like that comment at all. As if, you know, teenager does not have any responsibility on earth and they do not suffer the consequences of their own actions. Well, they do. Okay, bubble burst. They do. And so don't throw out the age and say that, oh, since they are young and innocent, so probably whatever they do, they do not understand or they don't know what the consequences would be. Well, that would be a fairy tale story, okay? Joseph, being a 17-year-old boy, would be able to tell, okay? Would be able to tell that his father loved him a lot more than all the other brothers, especially with the, you know, richly ornamented uh, rope for him. Well, it kind of stands out. Why? Because back in uh, Jacob's and Joseph's time, there would be no Marshall or no, uh, you know, all, all the other brand name store for them to buy clothes from. It would have to be specially made. And so, if you are telling me that Joseph cannot tell that the tension between him and his brothers were really bad because of his father's one-sided love, and on top of it, he was reporting bad reports to his father regarding to all the brothers that may show his uh, unsatisfactory attitude to him. Well, you are greatly mistaken. I mean, my own son and daughter would be able to tell if I only give one of them gifts and at the same time, the other one do not have it they would be able to tell that, oh, my father must have loved my brother or the, must have loved my sister a lot more than myself today because simply I do not receive any gift today. So what Joseph did right here, well, one day he will, he will rip it. And quite frankly, which will be next week's sermon from in the same chapter 37 from verse 12 all the way to the end of the chapter. Okay, but then remember this, what you decide to do today, you will rip the result one day. So if you want coins in your field, sow the seed of the coin. Do not sow watermelon seed and expect an orange tree to come out. Silly, but effective to understand. And so you need to ask yourself today, whether you're Christians or not, what do you see yourself with the relationship of God in the near future? Do you expect to be like Abraham, submit yourself in faith, obey God's, you know, direction in your life so that you will rip in the blessings of God in the near future or you're still not having time with God not having time to pray not having time to read the Bible and still expect your relationship with God to grow still expect that you know you know what it will all be God's blessing my life will be smooth and everything well think again because if you do not spend enough time with any earthly relationship you will not have a good friendship to begin with, right? Then why do you expect that with the relationship with God? And so this is one part that I really hope that you will reflect on. So verse five, Joseph had a dream and when he told, when he, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, 
Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when, shut, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. So, in my experience with all the sermon preaching regarding to Joseph, a lot of people will would play favoritism towards Joseph, saying that he was innocent. You know, he had a dream and he was a straightforward person. He just shared the, the, the dream with whoever he was with. And to me, that is not, well, that is not, uh, how should I put it? That is not the appropriate way to say it. Because right here, the scripture obviously imply all the tension between Joseph and all his other brothers already. So when Joseph had this dream and he told it to his brother, I intend to think that he he did it purposefully, okay? As if the bad reports is not enough, and right now he was telling his brothers that, okay, I had this dream, and then you guys are going to bow down to me. And that's exactly how his brother interpret his dream. Verse 8, his brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. So one thing that you need to notice right here is that his brother's attitude towards him turned from like hated him, hated him more, and then later on very jealous of him. So this attitude continued to pile up in uh, Joseph's brother's mind that they really, really, really don't like Joseph. And don't like, the term don't like here is already lightened it up a little bit, okay? And so right here, another point for us to reflect is that do we allow our negative emotions to continue to pile up in our own lives okay let me say that again do we allow the negative emotions to continue to pile up in our own lives granted if you take the position of um of joseph you know of course you know my father loved me he you know he will prepare everything for me obviously if there wouldn't be enough to share among the 12 brothers, you know, 12 sons of my father, I will still have my share. So if you take the position of Joseph, completely fine. But if you take the position of Leah's son, you would understand that, well, this is very unfair. And this is my own family. I can't leave them, right? Well, I can't do anything to it, right? I. All that I can do is to face all this unfairness and all this favoritism and as if I'm not my father's son and, you know, continue to play house in this household. It's not a good taste. It's not. It's a really, really messed up family dynamic. Okay. So I'm not saying that they can change their environment, but there is one thing that all of us need to understand and need to learn for the rest of our lives. That is how to control our emotions, how to deal with the negative emotions and the negative thoughts that continue to pile up in our lives. Because as you can see, Jacob's not going to change. Okay. In the past, like 10 plus chapters, you would hardly see that Jacob change anything except for, you know, after his encounter with God. But then to, towards his own sons, towards his own favoritism, you see that he was very consistent in it. And so his son continued to allow the negative thoughts and negative emotions to reign over them. Well, right here they say, do you intend, you know, said to his own brother, Joseph, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? Well, I can tell right now that you guys are being reigned by your own negative emotions. You guys are being ruled by your negative 
thoughts and emotions. And that is something that you and I have to pay very close attention to. When the time you cannot change your environment, but continue to deal with all the negativity, there is one thing, there is one thing that we need to understand. That is to fight over the negative thoughts and negative emotions is to understand the forgiveness of Christ in our lives. Somehow it may not connect in your heart, you know, the forgiveness from Christ to me, what does it have to do with all the negative emotions within me? Well, you may not see it right away, but let it break it down to you. God forgive us way before we recognize our own sins. He prepared the salvation for us already, long before we realized we sinned against Him. Okay? And when the time we received His forgiveness, it was because we understand now that we don't deserve Him saving us at all. So, when the time we accept that everyone sinned in the whole world, but God still loved us so much that He sent His only Son to us, well, what gives you the right to continue to hold grudges against other sinners? Is it because only because uh, He sinned against you right now? Well, I believe all sinners sin against God and man at a certain point in our own lives. But God is willing to forgive us no matter, you know, how sinful we are. So, will you be able to understand that forgiveness in your life so that today you will not hold grudges against other sinners sin against you? And that is something that most Christians do not do. Sad, right? We we graciously receive all the salvation, all the forgiveness from God only to hold grudges against other people who are doing the same thing as we did before in front of God. And so, will you, will you accept the forgiveness of Christ and let the forgiveness be effective in your life so that today you are willing to forgive those who sin against you. Because using evil, fighting evil, it will not work. It will only create more evil. The only way to deal with your negative thoughts and emotions, especially created by, you know, family dynamics, favoritism, you know, other people may said something that hurt you or may did something to harm you or steal from you or borrow and never, you know, pay you back and things like that, you know, etc. and etc. The only way for you to deal with all those negativity is to somehow find the forgiveness in Christ to forgive them. It does not sound attractive, right? Seems like the bad people always get away with whatever they can do. But then, don't forget, I said you need to find forgiveness in Christ in your life to forgive other people. So that forgiveness does not originate from you. It originated by God. So it's added in your life. You need to find that and forgive other people so that you will not allow yourself to be reigned and ruled by the negative emotions because once again, rip what you sow. If you continue to dwell just like Joseph's brother in all this negativity towards his own father and now towards Joseph, eventually you will do something very evil to the point that you would not even understand why you would make that decision later on in your life. Because reap what you sow. If today 
you sell in all the negativity in your life why would you expect yourself to be happy why would you expect yourself to be holy why would you expect to walk in the path of righteousness which is full of forgiveness and god's grace and the god's love and the mercy of god if you want to be holy to follow god you have to sow in the word of god and the word of god is built or the word of god is god jesus christ his forgiveness and don't worry when the time you feel like that okay yeah forgiving all those bad people you know they get away with all that they can and it seems like i i'm the only one who suffered the loss don't worry about that don't worry about that jesus already promised so much more in his kingdom for you to receive today only if you obey and follow his command and trust in him believe in his promise he has so much more than what your temporary loss might be today and on top of that you get your life back way before all those people can why because right now you are following the will of god to forgive other people who may have done harm or who may have done bad things in your life now this is what you can choose today whether you want to continue to dwell in the negativity just like joseph's brothers right here and eventually they will sell joseph out which is horrible among brothers okay or today you can choose to follow god so in the seed of righteousness and remember what jesus promised you when the time the seed falls on the good ground good soil and the tree comes up it will bear fruits 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold at least you will get 30 folds right so what do you choose today what do you decide to sow today and that is depending upon you and your decisions and then verse 9 then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers listen he said i had another dream and this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me when he told his father as well as as well as his brother his father rebuked him and said what is this dream you had will your mother and i and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you his brothers were jealous of him but his father kept the matter in mind so right here you would notice that later on there will be two other sets of dream and it always come in two okay and only this part of Joseph's dream was regarding to himself okay and Joseph had it twice and it actually only single out one point that is Joseph will eventually come in power and his entire family will bow down to him okay so what's the last point for us to you know think about this last point is that God God's will will fulfill in your life however way that it plays out in your life okay so if you're familiar with Joseph's story you would see that he was being sold by his own brother he was framed by Potiphar's wife and then being thrown in the dungeon and in the dungeon he was forgotten by the one that he actually explained the dream to and that person got saved so all these negative ways in our own eyes would not play out well for that particular person but then you will have to notice this when it is the will of god in your life it will play out according to the divine power of god in your life what i mean is that people may do harm in your life you can't avoid it just like my previous preaching say you know sadness tragedy you know disappointment all those negative things 
You don't have to invite them. They will come straight into your life without you ever noticing them that they are getting close to you. They will just come. Okay. They will just come. But then Christians, and that's why I say, will you, will you pay attention to your relationship with God and have the relationship with God in your mind all the time to make your decisions. Okay. So right here, what you need to understand is God is always with you no matter what. Things may happen in the negative ways in your life right now. You know, and quite frankly, let's face it, we are all in the pandemic. So there isn't a lot of good news around, right? But then don't you ever forget this. God is still with us. So when God is with us, will you lose faith in him about his purpose in your life? Or you would see you or you would do just like what Peter did, that is, when the time he thought that, you know, Jesus already, you know, forget about me and he moved on. And so I'm going back to my old, old lifestyle, which is being a fisherman. So this is what you need to think about. And this is what you need to decide. And that's why I continue to say, you need to have this truth in your mind, reap what you sow. If you understand the will of God in your life, if you understand the calling of God in your life, it really doesn't matter what happened right in front of you. God's will will always prevail, no matter what, no matter what. Yeah, Joseph, you know, Joseph's life was, was very, very tough, okay, but then you will need to understand God meant it for good. God did not say that. Joseph said that. What you guys did when the time he said to his brother were, was meant to be evil, but God turned it to be good. Because today, I can save you guys from the famine and save all the other people from the famine. Most of the time, we only focus on what's happening right now and thinking that God is no longer with us. Thinking that, you know, maybe I did not do this or I did not do that so that I'm right now living in the consequences of my own sins and that God will have no power whatsoever to rescue me. Well, according to this chapter or according to Joseph's life, you are mistaken. God is with him. And so, so is today, God is with you. Things happen bad, lean on him, trust in him. When God reveal his calling in your life, well, hold on to it. Don't back down. Don't go away from it. Don't run away. Why? Because God's will will always prevail no matter what happened in front of you. So brothers and sisters, do you have the faith to hold on to the will of God in your life? Will you hold on to it no matter what happened in the near future? Do you still trust that God will be able to fulfill his purpose in your life and through the, all the adversary that may happen in your life, it is only meant to build you up so that one day you can inherit a lot more in the kingdom of God. So reap what you sow. If you sow in your faith in God, you will reap in the kingdom of heaven for all his blessings that he has reserved for you. So right here in this uh, first Part of the chapter you would see that Jacob continued to reap what he sow, Joseph as well and all his brothers as well. So which kind of seed are you willing to
to sow today? And what kind of harvest are you looking forward to reap? If you find that you are on the right path to reap what you expect and you are and what you are sowing today, that's great. And I sincerely hope that it is the blessing of God that you are going to reap. So make your decision with this truth in your mind. Whip what you sow so that, well, we got no excuse <laughs> in the near future when the time we see God. Why my life is like that? Well, look at what you sow today. So don't expect the wrong type of fruit coming out when the time you sow that particular type of seed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this part of the chapter. Let us not forget what you have promised Abraham and how it partially fulfilled in Joseph's lives and how Joseph's life would lead to the book of Exodus. So we are in the beginning of this chapter and Father, thank you for allowing us to see how Jacob's family dynamic continue to elaborate in this chapter and how it develops in Joseph's lives. And above all, we see your sovereignty and you, we see that your will will always prevail in our lives. So Father, help us to make the correct decisions based upon your will and based upon your word. So Father, today, I pray that you will be merciful unto us. Help us to find time to have that dedication unto your word so that, Father, may our lives continue to build upon your foundation. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.